Okay, number two, we turn the tables. Instead of giving you the polynomial function and then you finding its m behavior, y-intercept and x-intercepts, we're now giving you that information and you have to construct a polynomial accordingly. So let's just sketch out the problem situation. All right, uh, this first statement is a statement about the n behavior. As x goes off to negative infinity, the p of x goes to infinity. So the p of x, remember, is the y values. So as x heads off over and over to the left, the y's are heading more and more up. So I'm going to start up here. The graph of y equals p of x touches the x-axis at the point negative 1, 0. So here's the uh, x-intercept here, negative 1, 0. And we're told that the graph touches there. So I can imagine it just comes down, touches, and rebounds. Now we're told p of 0 is 3. Well, that means that the point 0, 3 is on the graph. In other words, that's the y-intercept. 0, 3. P of 2 is 0 is giving us another x-intercept. Now it doesn't tell us what's happening at 2, 0, whether it touches or crosses, but this last bit of n behavior is going to force it to cross. As x goes to infinity, the p of x goes to negative infinity, which means I'm exiting down here in quadrant 4. So we can mentally connect this stuff up and get the graph of a polynomial. And now the question is, what's my polynomial function look like? So let's look with the x-intercepts. From our experience, we know that if x equals negative 1 is a 0, it comes from a factor x plus 1. And this will be validated in the next section when we talk about the factor theorem. But here we just, from experience, we're trying to come up with a polynomial function. So we're going to have a factor of an x plus 1 here. And we need the multiplicity to be even because we need it to touch and rebound. So we'll go ahead and just make that squared for now. The other x-intercept is 2, 0. And we know that if 2 is a 0 from experience, we need x minus 2 as a factor. So put x minus 2 there. And since it's crossing at 2, 0, I need a multiplicity odd, which means I'll just keep it like that. So this takes care of the x-intercepts and the behavior near the x-intercepts. Now I've got to fix up the n behavior and the y-intercept. So p of x is equal to some multiple of this. I'm just going to call that number a. I know that p of 0 is 3, so I'm going to plug 0 into my formula, and that'll uh, determine what the a is. So p of 0 would be a times 0 plus 1 squared times 0 minus 2, and if I simplify this, I get negative 2a, and I know that p of 0 is supposed to be 3. That tells me a is negative 3 halves. So at this point now, I've got my polynomial function to be negative 3 halves x plus 1 quantity squared x minus 2. Well, the last thing I need to check is that the end behavior works the way it should. What would the end behavior of this guy look like? Well, I'd go through and pick up the leading term. I'd have negative 3 halves. I'd pick up an x squared here and an x here. So it would be negative 3 halves x cubed. y equals x cubed would look like this. So y equals negative 3 halves x cubed would look like that. And sure enough, the end behavior then matches what it should. And so here's our final answer for a polynomial that satisfies those conditions. And that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 3.1.